Yo, what is going on, crew? Oh, I need to do some things real quick. There we go. What's going on, homies? Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are competing at the Yorton Cup, which is the natural bodybuilding, a big show in natural bodybuilding. Already been on stage for pre-judging, and that was a really fun time. Pro, that's what they call a pro debut. It's my first pro show. And uh, the, it started well, and then I'm gonna I- never slow down till I'm in my house. Can't tell if I'm blessed or if I'm cursed. <laughs> Go ahead and get all of you in the shoe, the backup shoe, which is where the dumbbells are. Go ahead and get Debut. Pro debut. Oh. Any final words, catch? Do your thing, man. Tight core, Brian. Yeah. Yep. Quarter turn to right. Hamstrings, <laughs> glutes, hamstrings, glutes. Nice. nice. Back out. Beautiful. Stay on those glutes, Brian. Hammies, too. Quarter turn to right. Nice, Brian. Yeah. All day, 54. Good job, Brian. Stay on the legs. Brian, Brian. Let's go, Brian. Let's go. Have some, have some fun, Brian. Come on, Brian. Turn it. Nice, 54. Good man. And relax. I did not place in my class. Essentially, I think my class was eight dudes, three different classes. And guys, the way shows work, every every different organization, federation runs their show a bit differently. The, the OCB, this is my second OCB show, first one being Tampa, Florida, last weekend where I got my pro card um, to compete as a pro. And then obviously this past weekend yesterday was the Yorton Cup. I was registered for men's open bodybuilding competing as a pro, so I was competing, competing against all the other pros that showed up. And the Yorton Cup, as I have shared several times, is widely accepted as the biggest natural bodybuilding stage and one of the biggest in the world. Uh, it's called the World Championships. Um, because the individual that wins that is, is often just like literally the next best fucking natural bodybuilder. I mean, I'll throw on the screen the guy who won uh, Men's Open. He was in the tall class and yo, like this dude, seeing him backstage, it was absolutely unreal, this freaking guy. Made me feel like I legit have never touched a weight in my whole life. You can't tell, but this dude's like definitely six, in between six foot, six two, maybe even six three. Freaking tall dude, carries a lot of mass. And either way, I did not place in my classes I shared. They broke up the classes into three. They were the short, so I believe that was maybe like five eight and under, uh, or five seven and under. I didn't even take a look, honestly. The middle middle class, which is what I was in, I'm five nine, so I'd imagine it's all dudes around five nine. Then the tall class is probably five, bleh, five eleven or six foot. And, um, and yeah, so my class had about eight dudes. I started out strong. I was in the top five. I think the majority, they kept us out there for quite a bit of time. We go through the mandatory poses. There's 10 mandatory poses in, in bodybuilding. And uh, we went, I think, three rounds. I'm fairly certain, three different rounds. So they were really, really picking us apart. They were probably, it was probably a close call for that top five. And uh, yeah, I slowly but surely moved to the outside, which not every organization is this way, but when you get moved out from the center, that's not a good thing. 
and by the end I finished on the outside. And I got some feedback from my coach Paul, who I trust immensely, and also several others, including Doug Miller, who Doug is, his company sponsors the event, Core Nutrition, Core Nutritionals, and, uh, and he's won the Jordan Cup. Uh, I'm not sure the amount of times, but I believe it's definitely more than once. And, uh, and yeah, so I really value their opinion, and it was basically, yo, uh, your tan was running, you were sweating quite a bit, so that washed me out. Uh, and it basically cut out a lot of detail, which detail is everything. Detail, aka being lean, seeing the lines. That was kind of muddied by the end because of my, my tan running, which I think it was because the night before the show, Friday night, I went to just a, a Palm Beach tan to get a base tan because they didn't have any more time to give me my base tan on Friday. So that's maybe why the tan was running a bit more. I'm not gonna blame it on that by any means. Second thing was my quads were not coming in as much. They weren't lean enough, um, which is like my quads are the last thing to lean out. It's really tough for me. Um, it's not tough. It's a challenge for me to lean them out. And besides that, posing could have been a bit sharper, which you know is not something that's new to me. I know that, uh, seeing that it's my first season competing on the bodybuilding stage. I've done men's physique before. It's just another level of posing that is required. And then not only that, but with the pros. Like I was on stage with dudes who were just like locking it in so tight, knew exactly what accentuated their physique the best. They've been on the pro stage for years. My takeaway from this is what gets you to stage two is gonna get you to stage three, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I'm extremely grateful. These are my thoughts just off the rip. A guy who made the top five and rightfully so, looked absolutely amazing, was I think he was like 47 years old. And that's a, that's like such a beauty of natural bodybuilding, is dudes who've just been doing it for so long, because you can, because you're healthy, because uh, you're not going to crazy measures to build a physique. And it's just really, uh, it's just a really neat thing, like seeing guys backstage, even above, like there were guys over 50 that were back there. And uh, amazing physiques, absolutely amazing physiques. So, you know, this is something guys, I'm gonna be doing for my life. Like, and that's a decision I made this year. Uh, just how good it makes me feel. Uh, it's so fucking awesome. It just like fucking fires me up so much. Like I feel like I found like a group of people who get me. Um, like getting into the fitness industry, especially moving to Los Angeles and SoCal, and going to Gold's Gym Venice. Nothing against that gym. It used to be my home gym. If you've been an OG, I just never felt good about like my decision of like going. I did feel good about it, but I felt like I was in the wrong place. I knew I was like a square peg trying to fit into a circle hole, just being surrounded by like a bunch of people that didn't have the same values as me um, in terms of like what you do to your body and then just an extension of that uh, affecting every other aspect of life. But but this year is where I found that. So um, while I didn't place at the Orton with the pros, I'm completely at peace with that. I'm not, you know, harboring any like resentment to like judges or blame or anything like that. It's uh, It's been nothing but a rewarding experience. I've had great guidance from Paul. I've had, you know, I've met some amazing individuals. Um, and and this is uh, this is something that gets to continue, guys. This is not a, like a flash in the pan thing. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, let's roll. Good, one take. Today's Sunday, so it's the day after the show. Took some time after the show, I completely crashed honestly after pre-judging and uh, took the rest of the day to hang out with my mom and my aunt. Uh, my aunt came in, she lives in Virginia, so very close. And uh, we basically shopped a little bit, went out to eat, Cheesecake Factory, obviously, obviously. Don't say, don't say that, Brian. He's gonna, he's gonna kill me now. Got, uh, got this awesome Asian dish with the spicy, spicy cashew chicken, I think it was and uh, a cheesecake, the Oreo, uh, Oreo, Oreo something cheesecake. Sorry. No, 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 we should just start the tapeworm diet. Exercise number one, yeah. your super setting triple fries, we can, like, and bar. turkey burger, yeah. fried egg, yeah. onions, know, lettuce bar, three, three sets, ten reps. Let's go. It wasn't deep. I didn't look at the camera, but I bet the shot is sick. I had to come out here on this little ledge thingy and sit. Uh, I want to close the video with a message, and this is kind of a couple of reasons why. First thing is, I just saw some Tibetan monks here uh, taking a tour. I'm sure they're obviously in Washington D.C. to take a look at the capital and whatnot. And four of them, four of them walking around. I'm looking at two of them right now, actually. And it just made me think of stillness and purpose and why we do what we do.
every day. And it's really smacking me in the face looking at them because uh, I was just talking about this earlier. I used to take runs uh, around this monument almost every single day when I lived here in uh, Washington, D.C. I actually lived across the bridge in Arlington, Virginia at a neighborhood called Courthouse, and I worked in Virginia. And uh, that was during a time in my life, it's only three years ago, where I decided to take a stand for my life and do what I want to do. Uh, and not beyond that, do what was was pulling me towards it. And when I was existing in that space, I was, I didn't know it at the time, but I was depressed and I was acting as I thought that I should. And I wasn't being who I wanted to be. I wasn't showing up the way I wanted to show up. A video, an old video of mine just auto-played. There's a freaking ant crawling on there. A video of mine just auto-played here on YouTube yesterday of me vlogging when I lived here in Washington, D.C. And watching the video, I can truly say that I am a different person. Like, not just like people say in a sense like, oh, like he's a different person now, like. I've never listened to A Day to Remember. My emo friends out there, you know, you know what's up. Let's see how much I weigh. When I watch that, I don't even recognize that person that I was. I can't even put myself in the mental space that I was in. But I could see that I'm a very different person in my energy. I could see it in my confidence. And it's, it was, to be honest, it was a, an emotional experience for me to watch that video. I watched three minutes of it and I had to turn it off because it actually made me uncomfortable with just how out of alignment I was and how lost I was in that video. It's actually quite baffling. And it's making me take a step back here, being back where I started this whole fitness journey. Beyond, but beyond that, just taking a stand for myself and my life, just what can happen in such a short span of time when you decide to acknowledge that you're worth it. Acknowledge that you're worth it, you got a plane coming. But um, really acknowledge that it's what you do in the dash in between the dates you're born and that you're dead, I'm gonna get closer. And that's what matters the most. That's what matters the most because we don't have a lot of time here on this earth. We have a hundred years if you do everything right, but even if you hit your hundredth year, you're probably not in the best mental space, so you have less time to make an impact on others that you would like to. What is that impact? You get to decide. Maybe it's an alignment of what you're good at, what excites you, your talents, but whatever that is, I hope you decide to lean into that. I hope I can be maybe a nudge for you to explore that because you don't want to live in regret when you are getting older and a little less capable and you're not able to be as effective with how you'd like to impact the world. And I'm just extremely grateful with some amazing guidance earlier in life that I was able to have that realization, that that awareness that I was, so, was totally misaligned. Um, because watching that video of myself and just putting myself in the place where I was here, I knew that I was off. I knew that something was wrong, I just didn't know how to get out. I was like, okay, I've identified that I'm in a box, but how do I get out of this box? At least I know that I'm in a box. Some people never even realize, they go their whole life realizing, not even knowing that they're in a box, they just think like this is the way that it is. Um, which is sad, but if you feel you may be in a freaking box and operating out of the expectations of others, I just ask you to revisit that and say, is this the best thing to be doing? Just notice it. All right, much love guys, see you back on the channel. Um, probably tomorrow, let's be real. <laughs> Name is Brian Acosta, shredforlife.com. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, dropping that first like, dropping that first comment. And if you've been around for a while, thank you so much for giving me your trust and your time. We'll be back. We'll be back soon. Ah, show tan still strong. Keep out of the shadows of zero, see me break spines, see cross bones all around before you get mine. Cash rolling.